Hi, my name is Maria Mannone. I come from Italy. I'm a composer and theoretical physicist. I achieved my PhD in music composition at the University of Minnesota in the United States. I have been working with Kiriaki, Katia, Kudina, and Ivan Tyler in a nice and amazing project about a musical way to describe the birth and the early development of the universe. Katia is also a composer from the State University of Minnesota, and Ivan is a scientist from the Minnesota Institute for Astrophysics. Trying to render the story of the universe to music was quite a challenge. First of all, we have to create a bridge that connects what we hear in music, what we compose and hear in music, and what are the basic ideas of um, scientific description of the universe. We use several concepts, first of all from physics, mathematics, but also mathematical theory of music, gesture similarity, musical gesture theory, and also some elements of cognitive sciences applied to music. The idea um, is the following. First of all, we have to create a clear connection between what we um, see, for example, when we have some images on the lines, and what we hear. Uh, let me make a um, couple of very simple examples. When you have a straight line, you can imagine to render this straight line with a steady sound. And when you have a raising line, for example, with a raising collection of pitches. Or when you have a collection of isolated dots, or for example, points on canvas, you can easily musically render them with a collection of isolated uh, staccato notes, like a collection of isolated dots on the piano. For example, just as an idea. In the piece, we consider three examples. First of all, we took into account the cosmic background radiation and we tried to render this radiation with a low steady sound. It is at least what we have today, steady sound, what we have today from this radiation. The second example was about the expansion of the universe. And in music, we started with a very simple cell, something like that that is little by little opening and getting wider and stronger. Something like this. For example, of course, it is not a matter of a specific tonality or the other, just to give the idea of the musical figures and structures. The third example was about the neutron, beta-neutron decay, that was one of the main processes in the beginning of the universe. These and some other processes um, are described by using Feynman diagrams. A Feynman diagram is a graphic way to represent the behavior of subatomic particles. In a nutshell, you see a collection of arrows, points, and these diagrams, and it's possible to describe them in music by, for example, um, using the combination of different melodic lines that are intersecting each other. For example, uh, if you have two lines joined together, you can easily render them by using two different musical melodies that are inter intersecting. So, this one is the one going down, and the one is the one raising. And let's put them together. So that's the idea that you get. So I hope that you will enjoy reading the article. Thank you so much for your attention. Hi, I'm Evan Tyler. Uh, I'm one of the co-authors on the Narrating Origins paper, and I'm a PhD candidate in astrophysics at the University of Minnesota. It was through this that I, I met Maria and Kakia, and I got really excited about this project because um, the idea of turning physics and cosmology into music was something that that felt very revolutionary to me but in a way it was familiar because I work in my own research with a type of event called Whistler waves which are called that because uh, if you take the electromagnetic spectrum from these light waves and put it through into sound you get this 
whistling noise. Um, and so I thought it was kind of cool that, that someone was trying to take a much more artistic version of this and, and put it into music. Um, the origin of the universe is, is a really beautiful narrative to, to put to music because there's just, it's such a rich story with so many processes and, and so many changes as it progresses. Um, the universe began as a singularity, just a tiny point, and it's expanded from then and has continued to expand for the last over 13 billion years since that time. As it expanded, it cooled and it became less dense, and eventually the matter that started out as this boiling hot soup of quarks slowly uh, grew apart and cooled down enough that we could create protons and we could create neutrons and we could create electrons. Um, now, at the time that that happened, uh, the, the neutrons and the protons existed in about equal number, and they could switch back and forth. Either a neutron and a neutrino could combine and create a proton and an electron, or a proton and an electron could combine and create a neutrino and a neutron. And these things happened in about equal amount at the very beginning. But as the universe continued to expand, and as things continued to cool, slowly this began to favor the protons until eventually um, the, the particles all grew so far apart that they could no longer interact. And at that time, we had many more protons than we did neutrons, which is what we see in the universe today at a ratio of about one proton for every six neutrons. Now, once that happened, the universe still kept expanding. It kept expanding. And the protons and the neutrons uh, eventually cooled down enough that they were able to combine into atomic nuclei. And then it kept expanding and that cooled down enough that the electrons were able to combine with the nuclei and create atoms. And at that moment, the light that existed and was trapped inside of the matter of the universe finally was allowed to escape. The universe is what we say it became transparent. And all of that light that was trapped behind the matter finally could escape through like a window and stream through the universe. And that first bright light that was able to escape from the universe is what we now cause the cos call the cosmic microwave background. And when it was first emitted, it was at a temperature of about 4,000 Kelvin, and it would have been visible to our eyes if we had existed. But by now, because of the expansion of the universe, that light has redshifted all the way down into the microwave range, where it's no longer visible to us, but it is visible to our instruments. And that constant, low-frequency, dim glow that surrounds us in every direction is the cosmic microwave background that we observe today. And from that time, the universe still kept expanding and kept expanding. Matter was now in the dark. It was moving around, not giving off any sort of light. Uh, but gravity was affecting it, and slowly it clumped together and it clumped together until eventually these clumps became large enough and heavy enough that they were able to start fusion, and the first stars were born. And for the first time since the cosmic microwave background, light re-entered the universe, blaring out of these, these stars. And the photons that were released from these stars were very hot, and they tore through the neutral gas of the universe and re-ionized it. And changed the nature of the universe yet again. And these stars fused lighter elements into heavier ones inside of their cores, and then they would burn out and they would die, and they'd blow all those heavy elements out to reseed the universe, which then were formed into other stars and then blown out into the universe again. And that is how the heavy elements came to exist in our universe, which were things that allowed rocks to form and ice to form and heavier molecules of all sorts and metals. And those are what allowed planets to start to form. And from the time that planets could form, that set the building blocks for life to form in the first place, which led to the existence of everything as we know and as we understand it, and the existence of beings that now look out and try to understand this again. And that, in a nutshell, is the story of how everything came to be. Hello, everybody. My name is Kaki Guldina, and I am a PhD student at the University of Minnesota in music composition. Um, I'm from Greece, and I am the composer, I'm the artist of the team, in uh, quotation. Um, I initially had this idea back in 2015, this idea of creating music based on the Big Bang timeline. Uh, at the time, I was really fascinated by the 
the progress that we as humanity had made with the boson Higgs, with the CERN experiments. Uh, I was watching Dr. Nanopoulos' um, seminars. I was, I was amazed. Uh, so when I got to the University of Minnesota, I met Maria. At the time, uh, she was a PhD student here in composition. Uh, and uh, she, she introduced me, uh, very, in a very basic level of course, to the gesture theory that she was uh, uh, studying at the time. And I thought that that's it. This is uh, an actual uh, tool for, for us. Uh, we can use this theory to actually make uh, music uh, that is uh, mathematically based on uh, motion. Um, I should tell you that this was the initial, initial idea, but um, I realized as time progressed that uh, there is a, it's not musically rewarding for us to create music that is uh, mathematically uh, exact. Um, we, uh, we use the theory because um, it is something that can be done, but it's not our... It's, it's not the aim of this um, uh, of this project. The aim of this uh, is a project that is that um, uh, we we want to show how all people have one common ground, have one common origin, and uh, we don't really care if the music is uh, um, exactly describing particle or planetary motions. Nevertheless, uh, I will let myself be inspired um, by the motion of the elements of the universe um, and uh, in a way that it's going to be creative for the music. Um, so for me, uh, beautiful music is, rewarding music is, is my main goal in this project. Uh, Maria has contributed, has a huge knowledge uh, when it comes to gesture theory and mathematics and Evan has also um, fortified us with a solid background when it comes to astrophysics. Um, I would really like the, the, the piece to be reflective of every culture, uh, broadly speaking, in the universe, uh, in, on Earth. Um, I would like to, uh, ha I would like the piece to have three parts. The first part is going to be the early universe, um, the second part is going to be the universe expanding and the third part is going to be the human existence in the universe and that is the part where I will try to uh, reference um, as many different cultural backgrounds as I can. Um, that's all for me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you find our project interesting. Thank you.